With all the movie and television adaptations springing out of nowhere, specifically video game adaptations, I felt I should add one more to the mix. Now don't hurt me, it's true. Some of the adaptations that we have seen so far are along different degrees of success. Some are really good. I know that I've lived a relatively comfortable life. Stop! Mercy! Some are the opposite of good. That being said, one of my favorite games of all time, Red Dead Redemption 2, has always had my attention and fascination. I have a yearly tradition of replaying the game during the last weeks of summer. A game damn near close to perfection in terms of cinematics, storytelling, and the classic themes of outlaws trying to outrun their past and facing an unstoppable future that is steamrolling down upon them. I always wondered to myself, if a studio was stupid enough to give me a fuckload of money and make me a showrunner, what type of talent would I want to be part of the series? Welcome to Yikes Reviews Special Dreamcast. An opportunity for me to imagine what my cast would look like for the critically acclaimed franchise, Red Dead Redemption. Now let's start with like the principal cast, so to speak. First off, we have to mention who to cast as Dutch. Plenty of you, but trust me, we will. Wake him up a little. We need an actor who is refined, charming, and a manipulating sociopath. A killer who dreams of being a uniter of the common man. There are so many actors in Hollywood that can capture out this role. Robert Downey Jr., Daniel Day-Lewis, Leonardo DiCaprio. However, when I think of an actor who can accomplish this task exceedingly well, one name comes to mind. Woody Harrelson. Woody is someone who can nail being empathetic and charismatic and become incredibly terrifying at the drop of a dime. Woody's entire career has prepared him for this role, and I know he'll knock it out of the park if chosen. Now, that's not to say I do have some runner-ups for Dutch Vanderlyn, and I'll just post them here. Matthew McConaughey is always a great um, addition. Um, if Woody Harrelson doesn't want to be in it, they have really great chemistry um, in True Detective, the first season. And, you know, I heard they're some somewhat related, so it'll be a nice switch up between those two. Denzel Washington, always a fan favorite. Keanu Reeves, I know it's a little surprise, but I think Keanu can pull it off. Many people doubt Keanu's acting abilities, and I'm here to tell you that Keanu can act. And in the latest like trailer for Sonic 3, like he's knocking that out of the park. So I think he'd be a good fit. Hugh Jackman, always. He's done, he's done Broadway. He's done action. He's done drama. He can do it all. And Killian Murphy. What's not to say about Killian Murphy? He's really a standout performer. His latest run in Oppenheimer proved that he's capable of being a leading man. He's also very charismatic. He can be terrifying as well. You've seen him in Peaky Blinders. You've seen him in uh, Red Eye opposite Rachel McAdams. He was pretty terrifying and charming in that. So he can pull off the sociopath aspect really well, as well as the empathetic role as well. Hosea Matthews. Why'd you take the boy, Mrs. Braithwaite? You stole Boys my Boys are liquor. off limits. You stole my horses. Ain't no rules in war, mister. Matthews. Yes, yes, that's it. <laughs> Where's the boy? Yes. If Dutch is the father of the Vanderlyn gang, then Hosea would undoubtedly be its mother. Hosea is a master con man and a businessman. He is Dutch's moral compass and partner, often being the most rational and empathetic member of the crew. We need an actor who can capture that feeling, but also, when the scene calls for it, to be a believable scoundrel. Who better to play Dutch's right hand than Brian Cranston? You've seen him in Breaking Bad. He's phenomenal in Breaking Bad. He's also done voiceover work. I promised I would protect her. Do you remember? Protect who? It can't be. That fire? I won't let you. He's also the crazy, kooky, silly dad and Malcolm in the middle. I found the beer you hid in the garage. After all our talks about. Like he's he's done everything. He's he's a long standing performer. Great actor. Just a great guy all around. He has the acting chops. Not only to be senior and wiser than Woody's to, to Woody's Dutch, 
but also he has a flair for the comedic timing. Now, the runner-up for Hosea Matthews would be Bob Odenkirk. Bob Odenkirk has shown his range. He's a brilliant writer, excellent actor. He got his chops in like comedy, and like he can do everything. He can do comedy. He can do suspense. He he's done thrillers. He's done he's done ever he's done it all. And if you've seen Better Call Saul, some may say it's actually better than Breaking Bad. I'm kind of on that camp. Like he his range is phenomenal. I think he would be a great substitution for Brian Cranston in the role of Hosea. Arthur Morgan. Maybe when your mother's finished mourning your father, I'll keep her in black on your behalf. And in three different states after us. They chased us from the West. They chased us over the- To play Arthur, one of gaming's greatest protagonists, even eclipsing John Marston, in my opinion, you have to embody a ruggedness as well as a quiet sorrow. A man who could have been a leader of his gang if he chose to, but he chose loyalty over ambition, even over his own happiness. Arthur is my favorite character, and there are so many actors in Hollywood who can capture his mystique. I'm probably going to have to have a lot of runner-ups for this role. Um, sidebar, what made me kind of think about just the idea of this video I recently got in touch and, and had a chance to see Longmire, and I'm a huge fan. Like, I've seen the first season. I'm just now starting the second season. Like, Robert Taylor, he looks just like Arthur Morgan. And in my hope of hopes, I would want him to be Arthur Morgan. The whole thing is, you know, he, I wouldn't sure if he's, he's pretty much a little bit older, but if he wants to audition for it, I'll be all for it. Him playing the role as you know Sheriff Longmire, it just captured everything that Arthur is, and he is my he is like one of the runner ups for Arthur Morgan in my opinion. So, um, but for one person that I feel can capture Arthur Morgan, that's sort of in between being relatively young, he's still relatively young, and just old enough to kind of capture that ruggedness and, and mystique of Arthur is Glenn Powell. I saw Glenn Powell in Top Gun Maverick and I was just blown away by his performance. Um, he kind of was a scene still of most of the movie. I also recently saw him in a Netflix movie, Hitman, and he played a range of characters in that. And I, I was I was blown away by that. Like he, he even did um, Patrick Bateman from American Psycho, which was really good. He nailed that role off the bat. And he has a nice mix of Really great chemistry, um, terrific range. Like he he can he can pull off different parts if he needs to be. And he's been acting for a while. He's been he's he was in Spy Kids if if you guys don't remember, and um, he's been in the business a long time. But I feel that I want somebody young enough, but not too young, to kind of pull off and and push someone who's kind of getting up in the years but still has a lot more energy, a lot more gusto. And Arthur's that type of person. He's very rugged. Um, he has a lot of energy and someone needs, I need someone to pull up that energy. And then of course, over the tail of the series, I want him to kind of pull off the spoiler, you know, the sickness that he has um, going forward and, and him being racked by all these demons and worries that he goes through over the course of, the series and I think Glenn Powell can pull that off phenomenally. Now, of course, I have some runner ups to this. Um, I'm also going to mention Bailey Chase, he's also in Longmire. I think he has a terrific look. I actually would like him if they do a sidebar, another sidebar. If they do a Wolfenstein movie, he'd be a terrific BJ, um, uh, uh, uh Blaskowitz at the same time. He has that like square face, um, and he, he has mannerisms and you know, likenesses like Arthur, but I think Robert Taylor and Longmire just has, he just embodies the spirit of Arthur. So yeah, I would definitely pick Bailey Chase. Um, and Bailey Chase is like, I think he's around 50. So he's, he is up there in years, but I think he'd be a nice, like compromise to like, if Robert Taylor didn't want to do it and, um, Glenn Powell didn't want to do it. I think B Bailey Chase could kind of get into that role and, and knock it out. Ryan Gosling, of course, he's like, the fan favorite. He's been in Fall Guy. He's done the rugged. He's done the he's done the thriller movies. He's done the goofy movies. He can do it all. He's done musicals. I think his range as an actor is, is still yet to be untapped, but I think he can nail this 
without a doubt. Chris Hemsworth, also another terrific actor. People give him shit for Thor. You know, he's just too goofy and stuff like that. But I thought he was phenomenal. Out of everyone in the cast of Avengers, he had the most layers. He had the most depth. Uh, he had he surprised me the most in terms of his acting and, and the depth that he was willing to go down to, especially in Endgame. Endgame, he really just showed so many facets of emotion and dimensions to Thor. And I think Chris Hemsworth, he's, he, does, he does terrific comedy. He has terrific comedic timing. So I'm not saying that Arthur is, is not a you know happy-go-lucky guy, but there are moments where he gets like a little bit funny, a little bit crazy. And I'll, I'll speak to some of that later on in the thing, but not to get distracted. Yeah, I think Chris, Chris Hemsworth would be a great Arthur Morgan. He's a bit tall, but I, I Hugh Jackman played Wolverine, so he's like over six feet. So and that and that worked out fine. So I don't think the height will have anything to do with it. And then Alexander Skarsgård, he'd probably be my last runner up. I think Alexander Skarsgård, I saw him in Succession. He can play very menacing, very aloof, very focused individual. He's done a range of roles where he's been both comedic and and both serious. He can mesh those pretty well. And I think he would be a, a really decent um, Arthur Morgan. Micah motherfucking Bell. Always full of sunshine, ain't you? Old Misery Guts Morgan. What you want, Micah? Hmm. Well, I, I want a friend, Arthur. I want hope. I want tomorrow to mean more than today. I want this whole damn shit show to have some kind of meaning I haven't understood. <laughs> But I ain't holding my breath. Yeah, I said it. Micah is one of the most loathsome pieces of shit to ever exist in digital form. He is, in, se- in essence, the anti Arthur. Someone whose lies and horrible deeds shake the Vanderlyn gang to the core. Micah cares only for himself, and the power he wields over Dutch and the other weak willed gang members is his superpower. You need an actor who eats up every scene they're in. Someone who can capture Micah in all their glory. Someone who can grow a wicked handlebar mustache. The actor needs to intimidate and be piercing and callous. There's only a few actors that kind of come to the top, but there's one actor above all of them that really sticks out for me. And if you've seen Django Unchained and you've seen the character Calvin Candy, um, Leonardo DiCaprio, he killed that role. This attractive Southern Belle is my widowed sister. Darling, you are a tonic for tired eyes. Mm. Mm. May I present to you Lord Lee Candy Fitzwilly. Yes, I think this is the level of darkness, this is the level of depravity, this is the level of insidiousness that the actor playing Micah needs to kind of get into. And I think Leonardo DiCaprio, he has no problem getting that low, getting that dark. He'll be a brutal choice in this role. Like I said, he would also be a nice kind of, I guess, symbolic antithesis to Glenn Powell. Glenn Powell, his, his career is rising. And I would say Leonardo DiCaprio's is falling, but he's kind of entering the Brad Pitt phase of his career where, you know, he did a lot of all these things and he's kind of like, I'm here to kind of support other people. I'm here to kind of be, I, I know I was a star. I kind of am the star, but I'm kind of here to kind of push the next generation of actors you kind of saw this a little bit in once upon a time in in hollywood where he was he was a star and he was over the course of the movies and how hollywood viewed him they viewed him as a heavy um and they just started casting him in 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 really villainous roles to opposite of you know young rising stars i think in some ways this will kind of echo that and i think he'll be a really great option people can go oh leo's in it you know it'll be a nice draw for people to kind of see the movie um even though stars don't really kind of sell movies anymore not the way they used to but i think having an all-star cast and having leo kind of be like the nice center point and woody harrelson being the nice center points to the young generation um and I, that, that's why i think that's why i would like to do this what like to have a tv series it's it's a nice way of having older-ish hollywood meet the newer-ish hollywood and kind of have them you know the old guard meet the new guard and a passing of the torch so to speak and i think leonardo dicaprio would be able to symbolically capture that and nice juicy villainous role where he can just eat up the scenes however he wants to so yeah now i have runner-ups to this 
in interviews I've seen, Christian Bale has joked about this, but he said that for a lot of the roles that he's had in Hollywood, <laughs> they've been roles that Leonardo DiCaprio has declined. I, I could probably be misremembering, misphrasing, but I remember hearing this or seeing this from him in recent interviews. And I would actually have Christian Bale, if Leonardo DiCaprio didn't want to do it, I would actually have Christian Bale jump in and substitute him for the role of Micah. Christian Bale can get very, very, very venomous, very dark. He flexed it a little bit in Gore the Butcher. He's done other roles where he's pushed himself even darker. Um, American Psycho, for instance. And I think he's like one of the most untapped actors in Hollywood where you give him a role and he'll he'll tear it up. He'll it doesn't matter. He'll 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 knock it out of the park. So I have full trust and faith in Christian Bale. Another great actor who I feel along the same lines as a Leonardo DiCaprio and as a Christian Bale is a Jake Gyllenhaal. I think Jake can knock it out out of the park as Micah. Um, I've seen him in roles where he's played very slimy, skeevious people. You know, Donnie Darko, he's a little bit twisted and tortured and dark. Nightcrawler, his role in Nightcrawler was very disturbing. Um, he can definitely be creepy when he wants to be, where he's just he's just really been very, very good. And this will be an opportunity for him to kind of flex those darker sides of his personality in the role of Micah. Tom Hardy, what's not to be said about Tom Hardy? Tom Hardy is a class A actor. Like, he can do anything. Um, and I think I'm seeing a lot more roles in Tom Hardy's career where he's just having fun. He's not really trying to win an Oscar or, you know, an Emmy or anything like that. He's just he's just having fun. Um, in his short-lived show, Taboo, he was very, you know, rugged, very grimy very twisted in some some regards and i think this will allow him to kind of get back into that mindset if you've seen bronson horrible <laughs> twisted portrayal of, of of a serial killer he's he knocked that out of the park as well so yeah tom hardy what one more can be said and carter hudson if you've seen snowfall and the fbi agent that played in that role that's carter hudson carter hudson has a terrific mustache handlebar mustache he has the look of of micah if he just Grows his hair out and get a nice, you know, wig. I think he can nail that role. And he he was, he was very complex in Snowfall. Pushing the limits in terms of what he could do to Franklin and his family. And he didn't stop at anything to accomplish his goals. He was very focused. And I think that's what Micah is. Micah is just focused chaos. He's just, he knows what he wants. He knows what he doesn't want. And he's willing to isolate the people in any group to get it. He's, he's able to turn people against one another and you need somebody that's very good at manipulating people and who's shown that on screen i think carter hudson is a great um substitution if none of the other actors want to be a part of it so john marston i've been nervous for a while i had a lot of time to think in that jail and i feel like i just don't know dutch no more you ain't the only one and this plan to get us out it just feels i don't know like he's stringing us along i know Killing in cold blood, revenge. We all do bad things, but he seems to enjoy it now. It's like he just wants to create more enemies, more chaos. Yeah, I know. I mean, I love Dutch. He saved me a long time ago. I feel like in Saint Denis, when I got arrested, maybe he could have. The original hero of Red Dead Redemption. John is smarter than Arthur, but less confident. He is a wanderer, still trying to figure out his place in the world. John is an honorable man. Well, as honorable a man can be who robs banks and kills people. Um, in essence, is Arthur's surrogate little brother, rival and friend. To capture John, you need an actor who can buy the mystique and wild streak of John, but holds a vulnerability to their portrayal. If you've seen Elvis, if you've seen... Some of the later roles, he was also in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. You know that Austin Butler is a force to be re reckoned with in terms of, you know, being, being a great actor. In terms of him kind of working off of Glenn Powell, they're around the same age. I believe Austin Butler is around three years, two years younger than Glenn Powell. So they would have a nice chemistry as far as, you know, big brother versus little brother. And that's kind of how it is in the game. You know, Arthur's always pushing John, trying to antagonize John. but he wants to get a rise out of him because he knows that John can be better. You know, John is actually teaching Arthur in some ways 
and Arthur's teaching John, but they don't want to admit it because, you know, they're, we're men, we're guys. We don't, <laughs> that's, that's as far as we're going to, you know, get to it. But, you know, you need somebody who's a mentor aspect to John and you need somebody who's, who has the acting chops to kind of push Arthur and push the story forward in their own way. Like John, he does not back down. You, you, he's, he's, he has a quiet strength. When, even when he's talking to Dutch, like Dutch hates him. Dutch recognizes that there's something in John that can doom him, can destroy him. And in some ways, John is smarter than Dutch. He just, like I said, he just doesn't have the confidence. He doesn't have the discipline to really sit down and talk within himself and try to figure that out. And you need somebody who has a restless energy. If you've seen Austin Butler in Dune 2 as Fade, like he captures that wild frenetic energy. He can turn it on and off at any given moment. And that's what John is. John is, he's a focused rage. He's a focus, he's focused chaos, so similar to Micah, but in a more positive way, in a way that is more malleable, in a way that's, I wouldn't say you could control him, but in a way that he's willing to tolerate it in terms of, you know, either getting what he needs for his wife and his son or for Arthur and the gang and the gang members that he cares for. So I think Arthur, I think Austin Butler would be a terrific addition as John Marston. Now here's some runner ups for John. Um, if you've seen reservation dogs, um, you know that the character of bear played by DeFerro Winnetai was really great. I really wanted to see more of him on screen and they focus on other characters throughout the story. Um, but I feel that like DeFerro has more to offer. He has more in his tank to offer, off, to offer. And I would love to see him in the role of a young John Marston. Um, and that's why I want this series to take. I want this series to be focused more on Red Dead Redemption 2, which is a prequel to Red Dead Redemption. And over the course of the series, you see John grow, you know, from someone who's unfocused, undisciplined, just unsure of himself to someone who gains that confidence, gains that sure footedness and, and becomes the hero that we know from the original Red Dead Redemption game. And I think to Pharaoh Winnetai, if given the opportunity, I think he can nail out the park and having someone who's indigenous. I know John is in the game. He's described as being the Scots Irish. He's he has heritage, but when I see him, he always has like this native quality to him, like this indigenous quality to him. And I, I don't mean to be stereotypical or, or, or I don't mean to, you know, besmirch anybody. Um, it's just, the vibe that he gives off, he has some type of heritage and I feel that he could really pull that off. If we can put an indigenous person, um, in the role of John, I think that's a really nice, you know, push forward, um, to have like an all-star actor like DeFerro portray John. So I think he'd be a great ch ch choice. Jeremy Allen White. Um, if you've seen him in, in, in shameless, if you've seen him in, bear you you notice that he does he has a quiet rage to himself he can get really really chaotic he can get really really focused really really intimidating he has a piercing quality to him to his um portrayals and i think we're seeing only glimpses of what he can do um he's also a next generation child, uh, talent and i think if given an opportunity i think he can nail arthur with as much of his mystique as possible so Timothy Chalamet, you know, he's everywhere. <laughs> he's, 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 he's like the next DiCaprio in, in some regards. Um, there's not a role that he hasn't done that I've not liked. I've liked every single role that he's done. Even some of the offshoot roles, you know, even the, the crazy role that he played, he played like some kind of weird conspiracy theorist and don't look up. He was, he was great in that. So I think he could really just knock it out of the park as a, a young John Marston he may need to bulk up a little bit, um, but I don't think that'll be a problem. You know, John is not someone who's like super muscular. Um, I, I don't think that's a problem, but I think in terms of like the acting, I think he he's a, he's a surefire. He's a sure sure thing. Um, and then Tom Holland, you know, um, the, the 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 pleasant rival, <laughs> so to speak, to Timothy Chalamet. I think Tom Holland, just like Timothy, he's a next generation talent. There's nothing that he can't do. He's nailed billion dollar franchises. He's done great independent films. He's done TV. Um, he's done a range of roles. And I think having him in a more 
more rugged role, more, I wouldn't say stripped down role, but in some regards it is, you know, we're, we were taking, you know, the Tom Allen who's done Spider-Man and we're bringing him down to do, you know, a Western. And I think he can nail it. I think he can nail the leading man role. Um, if given the opportunity, and like I said, it's nothing that he really can't do that I've seen that he can't do. So I think he'd be really great to play off of, you know, Glenn Powell as well. I think he has terrific charisma with any actor he kind of meshes with. And I think he'll knock it out of the park. Sadie Adler. I only left you an hour ago. You can't stay out of trouble for one goddamn hour. You got that poor bastard killed for his troubles. I kind of liked him. They got Comb, the government. They got Comb O'Driscoll. They're going to hang him in San Denis. Hang him? Okay. Mm -mm. He's already been tried twice for murder and found guilty. Sure, no doubt he'll escape again. No, he won't, because we're going to make sure of it. I... We have our own problems with the law, in case you ain't noticed. Dutch will want to see him swing. Sure, Dutch. He wouldn't even help us with Marston. And our situation is really messed up right now. You know how things is. Bastard's gonna swing. I'm gonna make sure of it. Closely followed by Marston. You saw him? Sadie Adler is a woman who went through the most traumatic experience a woman could ever go through. And instead of succumbing to that trauma, she rose to be a fearsome, prominent member of the Vanderlyn Gang. Even becoming an interim leader when Dutch and Arthur, Micah, Bill, and Javier were in Guarma as maroon fugitives. We need an actress who's around the same age as Glenn Powell, if a little younger, who can capture the strength and intense rage Sadie portrays. I feel there are few actresses in Hollywood that can embody this character well. Sydney Sweeney is one such actress that comes to mind. She can ramp up rage as evident in her turns as Cassie Howard in HBO's Euphoria. Plus, her chemistry with Glenn Powell in 2023's Anyone But You was on full display. I feel Sidney Sweeney, Tom Holland, Timothy Chalamet, Glenn Powell, I think she's not only a next generation actress, I think she's still, there's still more room for her to grow. Like she hasn't really hit that ceiling yet. And if given that opportunity and able to kind of push herself a little bit more in the role of a woman just trying to wrestle her demons, trying to, trying to, chain that monster of vengeance uh, within and she's able to kind of embody that role i have no doubts that sydney sweeney could i knock this out of the park so i think she'll be a terrific addition as sadie adler now i have only a few runner-ups for sadie adler both actresses have proven in multiple roles that they can handle the task of not only being rage filled not only being more compelling than some of their male counterparts but able to kind of take on weighty roles and see them through. Um, Margot Robbie and Elizabeth Olsen, I believe both actresses um, have proven that they can handle leading a movie, they, they can handle, handle a meaty role. And I think Sadie Adler, there's so much of Sadie that is on display in terms of like her complexities and her emotions, her chemistry amongst different members of the gang, and how she fuse getting revenge, how she views being a person broken in a broken world, you know, and how she works very hard to kind of mend herself back to a, a stable form to, to not only cope, but be an integral member of the gang. And I think both women, Margot Robbie and Elizabeth Olsen, um, can knock it out of the park. Lenny Summers. <laughs> You're too smart to spend the rest of your life robbing the banks. What do you think America is? America? I don't know what you mean. Oh, I've been reading Mr. Miller again. Ah. It's my weakness. What do you think America is? I get you. Well, it's like you said. America's a club. But it should be? An idea. Did I teach you that? You taught me the phrasing, but my dad had taught the ideas almost before I could ah. speak. Were no fun being an educated Negro for him. No. No, I don't imagine that it was. I always get the feeling he was a great man, your Paul. Not great, just normal and good. I sure turned out different. Now, here's what I'm thinking. Maybe those of us that still believe in the ideas of America 
Maybe we're the true Americans. And those buffoons in their clubs, they're the traitors. Huh. Well, maybe. Only problem, Dutch, is we don't make the rule. They do. Yeah, that is a problem, isn't it? Lenny Summers is highly intelligent and one of the best gunslingers in Vanderland Gang. He's also a top earner and a treasured member of the Vanderland Gang, especially to Arthur, who looks toward Lenny as a more of a surrogate son. Their bar scene together is one of the funniest scenes I've seen in gaming. For someone to play Lenny, they must be fearless, charismatic, and highly intelligent. I've spoken about this actor a dozen times, maybe three or four times on my channel, and I, 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 like, I like them. I, I like where they're going. I like the roles that they're, they're picking. And every time they're on screen, I immediately focus on them. And I feel David Johnson is, like I said, with all the others, I think he's, he's a next generation talent. I think he hasn't reached his ceiling. He's not even close to reaching his ceiling yet. I think there's still more for him to do. And he was exceptional in Alien Ramos. He's basically saved that movie for me. Um, I can't imagine watching that movie and him not being in it. Um, he was whip smart as the investment baker, Augustus Gus Saki and HBO series industry. And he proves beyond a doubt that he can carry a role. Um, if you give him a supporting role, he can carry. If you give him a leading role, I'm pretty sure he can knock it out of the park. And Lenny Summers is someone who's so endearing to Red Dead Redemption. Um, and the things that happen change the course of not only Arthur, but the story in the game. So I think he'll be integral to the role of Lenny Summers. I have some runner ups, of course. I believe both men have proven in not only series, but you've watched them grow um, over the course of, you know, Hollywood to be really great actors. And I feel they haven't given, been given a great role yet. And I'm not saying Lenny Summers is, is a super, super great role. It is a great role. It, it is integral to the story of Red Dead Redemption. He's one of the most endearing characters. But I feel giving these two actors a shot in the role of Lenny would definitely add a new, fresh dynamic. And I'm talking about Caleb McLaughlin uh, from Stranger Things. Um, you've seen him in this recent uh, movie, The Deliverance, and Isaiah John. He was also in Snowfall as well. Um, so I believe both actors could really do really well in the role of Lenny Summers. And I'm interested to see what they do in the future. But I think Lenny Summers will be a, 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 a cakewalk for both of them. Uncle. Just one time I hope to find you working. Just once. Do you believe in reincarnation, John Marston? No. Well, I hope and pray to whatever is out there that I get to come back as a youngin' so that when you're old and facing death, I can be some two-penny slave driver that comes along and hastens your journey into the grave. This is a fatal condition I got. And I'll give you another fatal condition. We don't get on with things around here, and we'll all starve. Get on with what? Farming? Ranching? Planting something? Well, the only thing that this land's good for is grazing. Grazing? Yeah, so so cows, sheep, goats. Now, goats is easy, but they taste awful. I don't like goats. And cows, I've seen enough cows. Yeah, sheep then. But any livestock, you're gonna need a barn. Barn will take three of us six months to build. Oh, you don't build a barn, dumbass. What do you think this is, 1785? You buy one pre-cut just like the house. This is the industrial age. The lumber fellers all have them. That guy makes me hate the modern world. Oh, come on. I'll deal with him. Mr. Milambago himself. An endearing character in the series of Red Dead Redemption who manages to outlive most of the principal cast. No one knows for certain how old Uncle is, but what we do know is that he is more of what he pretends to be. We need an actor so mythic, but who can betray a lazy asshole and who's always looking for life's shortcuts. Someone who appears to be a fuck up in life, but in reality, may be the most brilliant member of the gang. There is one actor who fits this bill. His career is badass incarnate, and he has contributed to some of the most iconic movies to date. 
I think of no one other than Kurt Russell. He would thrive in this role. We've seen him play a love of buffoon as the role of Jack Burton in 1986's Big Trouble in Little China. And we know he can play a tortured gunslinger as he portrayed his role of Wyatt Earp in Tombstone. Kurt can breathe new life into Uncle. And like I said, like, uh, Kurt Russell is like one of my favorite actors. He's, he's done it all. He's done horror. He's done action. Um, and Uncle, there are some similarities to the role of, I believe his name is Red, in the original, original Red Dead game. Um, not Red Dead Redemption, but Red Dead Revolver, I'm talking about. And there are some similarities in terms of like his backstory and some of the things that he says over the course of Red Dead Redemption 2 and Red Dead Redemption kind of call back to that character Red. And that's what I'm talking about as far as legendary. Kurt Russell can play someone who's pushing aside his mystique. He's very good. He's, he's very um, humble. And some of his, he's kind of brutally humble in some of his interviews. He doesn't like to talk up all the great things that he's done in terms of like the culture of, of, of movies and stuff like that and his legacy with Disney and stuff like that. Um, but he views acting more as, as a job, as labor. And you need somebody who's, who traditionally is humble, but who can mesh well with all the different rogues and killers and stuff like that, and still be like the funniest person in the room who can push people to their limits, push killers to their limits, and not have them seek revenge on him. Um, and Kurt Russell's really good at kind of dancing around scenes and dialogue and he's very he's very charismatic actor as well now i have some runner-ups for uncle of course um i believe william h macy um if if he was a little bit younger i would want him to play micah i i i don't think that's out the realm of him playing micah but i think william h macy would be a terrific uncle john goodman what can i say about john goodman he's still got it like he's still acting in 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 hollywood today and you know it would be rough um for him but he can still carry a scene and having him kind of like dance around the scenes and sleep around all day and drink around all day and order the, the women to go work and how he's, you know, lounges about. Um, I, I think he'd be terrific in the role of uncle Bruce Campbell, like Bruce Campbell. He's still out there. He's still funny as hell. Um, you, you've seen him in like Spider-Man uh, far from home and all these, in all these movies and the original Spider-Man, you've seen him in evil dead. And I feel that he can kind of bring, that kind of levity, that charm to the role of uncle very, very well. So I, I would not count him out. Will Ferrell. There's some people that just really don't like Will Ferrell. Um, I'm not one of those people. I, I think he's funny when he needs to be. Um, he can be kind of annoying a little bit, but that's kind of what you need. You need somebody who's funny and annoying. You know, somebody who's just like, like a nuisance, a gnat. And I'm not saying we need to have full Will, Will Ferrell on display. I think he can play someone like Will Ferrell 25%. But 35% Will Ferrell. And I think that would be more than enough for the role of uncle. So I think he'd be a great choice. And this may be an off, an off choice, but Keanu Reeves has always been a character. He's not followed type. He's always done things that are off center. He's always done things that have defied expectations. And I think having him be an old, chubby, just lethargic, you know, badass who doesn't, you know, who claims that he's done all these things. We know in our head, it'd be almost meta for us. We know who he is. We know what he's done, you know, in, a, in another universe, but it would be just a nice kind of callback to all the things that he's done. Um, and I, I think he would be a, 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 a nice off kilter substitute for a Kurt Russell um, as uncle. So yeah, that's that. And then last but not least, Abigail Marston. <laughs> He'll be all right. If they so much as put one bruise on him, I swear I'll bring the fires of hell on him myself. Ain't like nobody else around here's up for the task. We'll get him back. I promise. <sighs> you ain't no better neither. I can't get supposed it's strong, man. You can't protect one boy. <sighs> John's right. We're gonna get him back. Stop telling me that and do it then. And a woman who has made sacrifices stand by her man and the gang. She's currently raising Jack Marston seemingly all by herself. Abigail is a woman who wants John to grow up and be responsible, not for himself, but for their son, Jack. She knows John can be better, and she's willing to endure anything for all three of them to be together. You need an actress who play, displays a quiet, vast reserve of strength. 
despite her external situation. She also must not be meek. She needs to be someone who voices their opinion and can be motherly at the same time. I feel Devery Jacobs, who played uh, Elora Dan in FX's Reservation Dogs, has the acting skills and strength to capture a- Abigail Marston. Beautiful and bold, she has a great future ahead of her. Um, I like I said, I love Reservation Dogs. I wish it was longer, stayed on longer. Um, but I feel Devery Jacobs. She's also a director as well. I feel she's also a next generation talent. Um, she has not hit her ceiling, of course, and. With given the opportunity for, you know, if we're if we're kind of going along like the indigenous slant to these characters, John Marston and um, Abigail Marston, I think we could really see something really unique, something that we haven't really seen before in terms of adaptations, in terms of representation. And I feel that Devery Jays can nail this role without question. Um, there are some runner-ups, of course. Zendaya, like what, what could be said about Zendaya? She would be a blockbuster talent to any role she plays, but having her be the role of Abigail Marston, she's going to be playing a motherly role in the next Doom. I don't know when that's coming out, Doom 3, when that's coming out. Um, but having her, her see that see her as a young mother, seeing her trying to raise her kid. Be a part of a gang and 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 support her husband. It's something that we really haven't seen her do before. She's doing it a little bit in Dune. You're seeing shades of that in Dune. You've seen her kind of work alongside her her boyfriend um, Tom Holland, and she has terrific chem- chemistry with him. I think her putting her in the role of Abigail Marston will add another dimension, another layer to the show, and it'll kind of elevate it. Um, because she's a terrific actress, there's nothing she can't do, and you know I, I think there's there's skies the limits if she were to embody the role of Abigail. And then last but not least, Paulina. Um, Paulina, she was also in Reservation Dogs. Um, she played Willie Jack, and every time Willie Jack was on screen, I always always smiled. I, I liked her voice. Um, I, I liked her like vibe. Um, she was just terrific. She was kind of like left of center. But I think Polina Alexis is is very charismatic. She's able to kind of like embody whatever scene that she's in. And I think given an opportunity to kind of push herself beyond a traditional role. And if we're staying with the indigenous vibe, I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm, I'm not trying to like single her out just for being indigenous. I'm just saying that if we were to take this show in a direction that not only is representative of the wild wild west the culture back then the things that happened but have someone who represents uh, indigenous people i think pauline alexis could capture that in a myriad of ways i think she would be a great addition as abigail marston in this role directors producers writers posers and cinematographers um now we couldn't forget the cast without people who are actually coming together and making it and if i was to choose like one producer that would want to be a part of this, I would want Rob Nelson to be a part of it. He was the producer of the Red Dead Redemption 2 series, and I want him to be a part of the game series, and I want him to be a part of the TV series. Um, We've seen this trend of Hollywood taking, you know, producers, writers, directors of video game properties and just transitioning them into the TV space, you know, and it's done really well. You've seen it with Last of Us. You've seen it with Fallout. you know, I, I think this works really well because they've already known the nuts and bolts of not only the characters and, and how the process is made, but it's a very easy transition. If I was to pick a director, Vince Gilligan. What cannot be said about Vince Gilligan? You've seen Breaking Bad. You've seen Better Call Saul. He's a terrific writer. He's done X-Files. He can do it all. Um, if we need those sci-fi elements added to it, which you know there are in Red Dead Redemption, Vince Gilligan can knock it out of the park. So without question, I want him to be a director in the show. Roger Deakins. Roger Deakins. Roger Deakins. If I need a cinematographer, I want the best. If you've seen uh, the assassination of Jesse James by the coward, I will want that person who did that film, which was the inspiration for Red Dead Redemption 2, to be a part (laughs) of Red Dead Redemption, the show. And I would hope and pray Roger Deakins would want to be a part of it. Um, if somebody's name is Roger, 
And if there's another person's last name is Deacons, I want them to be like, I, I don't care. I want Roger Deacons to be the cinematographer. He's a masterful, brilliant cinematographer. Everything that I've seen from him is, is beautiful. Um, he just knows what the fuck he's doing. Okay. And I want someone to kind of capture that mystique, that look, and no one can do it better than Roger. Screenwriters, without question, I'm not going to deviate from the plan. Um, I want Dan Hauser. I want Michael Unsworth. I want Rupert Humphreys. I want Sam Hauser. And I also want Tony Gilroy. Tony Gilroy wasn't a part of the Red Dead Redemption writing team, but Tony Gilroy is a fantastic screenwriter. And if there's any other scenes that need to be kind of punched up a little bit, I think Tony Gilroy can knock that out of the park. He's, you've seen Andor. You've seen what he can do in Andor. Um, I don't see any problem with having him as an addition of the team uh, for the writing. And of course, we need composers. We need people to do the music. Um, I, of course, want Woody Jackson to be a part of it. He was a part of the original Red Dead Redemption as well as Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, and I also would like to have Natalie Holt. I really like her compositions. I really like what she's done with Loki. Um, this is one of my favorite songs of like all time for a TV series. And I think I would like to hear more of what she can contribute in having her kind of work on a Western. I think that will kind of blow the doors open in terms of like having some of that composition, having some of that distinction in terms of composers uh, be a part of the TV series. Well, that's it. I know, I know I have not talked about every single character. But I'm going to wait on you guys. If you liked what I had to say in this episode, I'll do a second episode. There's so many characters in Red Dead Redemption, but I kind of wanted to get down to the principal cast before I went on to, you know, the supporting cast or uh, other characters. And if you guys like this, you know, let me know. Leave a comment. Leave a like. Share it. You know, let your voice be heard. If you don't like it, let, let me know. And I'll, I'll change course, of course. But um, this is something that, when I saw Longmire, when I saw Hitman, um, when I saw the assassination of Jesse James, it was always rolling around in my head that it's something that I wanted to talk about because I love, I so much love Red Dead Redemption. I love the world. I love the characters. I love the writing. The gameplay, it's hit or miss. You know, some people love it. Some people hate it. There's no middle ground with the gameplay. But in terms of just full immersion, I feel like a cowboy. I feel like I'm a part of this world every time I play it. It's something that I just lose myself in. It's 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 damn near perfect of a game, and I'll continue to repeatedly repeatedly play that game. I know that there may not be a Red Dead Redemption three. I know there's a lot of people, uh, content creators, that feel that there shouldn't be a Red Dead Redemption three, and I I kind of agree. I kind of agree. I think Red Dead Redemption two encapsulated just in its totality what it means to be an outlaw what it means to be a, a brother, a friend, um, someone who's doomed, but doing, willing to do whatever it takes to protect what's yours. I, I, I think it captured everything um, so beautifully. And a lot of those members, they're no longer with Rockstar. And that's, I, I understand that. And this will be a nice compromise, so to speak, um, where we don't really get a video game, we get a show. And the reason why I say show is because you can explore the characters in a lot more depth, a lot more complexity than you can in a two hour, three hour long movie. You know, we're kind of rushing to get things said and told. And yes, there's, we can do sequels. We can do prequels. We can do requels. We can do all these things in movies, but having it in long form content, having it in a show, something that's longer than eight hour, eight episodes. Okay. Something given a sufficient budget. I'm not saying it needs to be given a billion dollars, but something that's respectable where we're able to not only get gather the talent for the show, but we're able to kind of craft it in such a way where it mirrors and is a nice companion to the video game, similar to how Fallout, the Fallout series is, similar to how Arcane is, um, where we're watching these shows as an extension to the video game. Um, and I wouldn't want there to be too much deviation from the adaptation process, but I understand that if the directors, if the screenwriters kind of want to say, well, maybe we should tell this story a little bit differently. I don't want them to tell about black, the Blackwater incident. I don't, please don't leave that as a mystery, please. Um, you can tell like little, you have like little, little flashbacks where we don't quite know. You can piece together little flashbacks, but not tell. We don't know what we're seeing. It's so horrific that we don't know. Um, I, I would compromise with that. But in terms of a narrative, I don't, I think the Blackwater incident it's terrific because it's so mysterious that it's such a horrific incident 
that it's literally the foundation of the jumping off point, the starting point for the entire redemption game. And we're already circling back to it. We're already, the characters are already circling back to it. Like, what happened? Hey, what happened? Tell me what happened. What happened? And we don't know. And that's beautiful because as an audience member, I'm looking at it and we don't know. So sorry to get on a tangent. If I, if I talk about redemption, Red Dead Redemption, I'll just go on and on and on. I'm just, I'll just love that game. But um, yeah, this has been Yikes Reviews Dreamcast Edition. Um, like I said, if you like it, I can do more Dreamcasts of video games or other properties, but um, I'm waiting on you guys. So like I said, if you like it, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know, um, and we'll go from there. This has been Cabs. I uh, appreciate it. I'm out. Thank you.